Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Tyranny. So here we are atop the mountain spire as we left off in the last session here in our newly crafted library. So seeing as we've reloaded the game um, we got a couple of um, you know additions to the staffing here, and they have now arrived. We have Velos, and we have Phil Fila. Yes. So we shall go and talk to them, and after we have done with that, we are heading out to speak with Graven Ash. Stepping lightly. Okay, so speaking first with uh, Velos. Did you know there are seven ways to write fire? but only two for water. Hmm. Could it be that fire has more meaning in our era? Oh my, apologies, Fatebinder. I can be taken for a ride by my own trails of thought. I'm sure there is something you need from me. Yes, there is indeed. So this is our... Check about later. I think this is the, the guy that makes things for us. I kind of forgotten what I actually got. What did I get? Feeler. So a skillful trainer who teaches law and oh, so this is yes. This 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 chap provides the scrolls, allowing us to uh, carry out further research. So he's our scroll creator, and obviously he hasn't created any scrolls yet. But uh, while he's here, let's to take a uh, an opportunity to ask him about uh, where he studied. Did he study at the uh, the Vellum Citadel, aka now the Burning Library? Uh, Yes, that is what it used to be called before Kairos's edict fell upon us all, taking thousands of years of knowledge and reducing it to ash. Uh, <clears throat> my apologies, Fatebinder. Uh, the, the wound is still fresh for many of us. Please, let me be of service to you. Yes, uh, better moderate his tone. We did what needed to be done. Right, so he's... Uh, not produced any scrolls, but uh, Feeler is a law trainer, which is very handy indeed. I was wondering when I would meet my patroness. Ah, a much better tone. Philia of the Forgebound. What is it, Philia or is it Fila? Make your mind up. Before you ask me what a smith is doing away from the forge, well, I'm taking a break from ironwork, and this library suits my tastes at present. Yes. Okay. Wants to spend time among our books. Yes, let's talk magic, my dear. Let's talk magic. So, forge-bound artisan lending her service here to us, and we shall uh, indeed pick up a little few tidbits of information, which we will store in the old memory banks. Is that our level of control for us? 18. That's pretty low, actually. I wonder. If, I was going to, like, power level law, but uh, I'm wondering if we should, in fact, maybe just bunt some of these up a little bit. They seem to be distinctly lacking, but anyway. So we got to 10 levels this rank. You know what? We'll use that. 14 levels trained in this rank. So we'll go another one of them. Maybe a couple of them. A couple of them. Eight more levels. All into law. And Calvina, just like that, is... Uh, Almost to level 7, uh, which is not too shabby at all. Kind of thinking whether or not Lantry, because he's our other magic user. We'll just give him a couple. Just a couple. We don't want to be uh, too uh, frivolous with our rings on our on our companions, but uh, he has proven to be very useful. So, uh, yeah, just a couple of, just a couple of uh, ranks of that. Okay. Learn so, something every day. so some training. Um, we can level up, and we will level up whilst we are here. Um, so, what's this? This is the quickness, so the, that's that's maxed out as much as we want it to be. Uh, we were going for accuracy and uh, quickness as our next two. 
bit more quickness I think. A bit more quickness and then this one which always confuses me really. I might leave this until I've had to, had a proper look. I might actually start crafting out a bit more of a build and flesh it out on paper rather than doing it to piecemeal. Save me having to uh, respec if I cock it up. Right, okay, so without further ado, we have now finished here in the mountain spire, and so we now head out. First of all, actually, so Leather is crossing, because I'm just kind of intrigued if, if anything's changed in the town now that we've unlocked the spire. So, Oh, we're in the sunset spire, not the mountain spire. Oh, got my spires all in a muddle. And I've only got two of them. God help me when I've got six. Uh, right, okay, so... Yeah, look look at that. You get like a bit of a fast pew, travel to that, and then we head out to Iron Half. Therefore, it only takes us two days. Only, only, yeah, just just the two days. Uh, 5,045 minutes. Hopefully we won't be stopped in our tracks today. We can just get straight to business. Ooh, looks a bit dusty. Right, so here we are at Iron Hearth. We've got a line of disfavoured camps and tents all around. And then we have a couple of things here. Could be cellars. A Kalos, that's uh, somebody who we've not seen before. Graven Ash is the inside the inner walls and some more these are probably merchants. Zephilos, Osmia. Sound like they could be trainers or something. So let's just have a wander. Let's have a wee look around here and see what we're uh, see what we see what we're up against. Fox Trick and O Venus. What look to be some chorus uh, envoys, a Kalos. It's very, very windy here. Welcome to Iron Hearth. Greetings, Fatebinder. A Kalos 32nd Legion. I'm glad to see Tuna's Agent Grace Iron Hearth. Ash's troop has no lack of order, but a servant of the court is always welcome. Between our missing commanders and a Scarlet Chorus Lieutenant pinned down, I'm afraid we have our hands full. I suppose I can spare a moment for conversation. You need something from me? Okay, so things aren't all hunky-dory here. Yes, asking about this uh, Scarlet Callous Lieutenant he's mentioned. Seems our troops have this little maggot of a Scarlet Callous Lieutenant cornered over at Cedo Village. From what I'm hearing, it's the same guy who's been ransacking our caravans the past few weeks. If I wasn't already handling something for Ash, I'd go and skin the filth myself. You being here simplifies matters. Make sure this lieutenant doesn't leave the village with his life. It's a bit presumptuous, isn't it? That we'd simply just, you know, start t handling their affairs for them. But uh, it will provide us with a potential opportunity for our investigation. So, of course, we will look into matters. Cedar Village. Good of you to pitch in. No one will mourn the loss of one more chorus rat. Okay, asking further questions. Okay, these are personal questions, not interesting. Okay, so travel to Seder Village, the Broken Spear. And we also have some updates, apparently. Oh. Two new items since our last visit. Could well be two new scrolls from uh, Velus. We'll get to those later. And we have a missive update. It's from Rogalus. Hmm. 
Dear Carl Wiener, your summation is most fascinating. Thank you for sharing. You are certainly not the first to proclaim an edict. Many of us have been used to complete the casting of the Overlord's magic. And you aren't the first to break the edict. Though that list of names is smaller, more exclusive list. Uh, what's curious though, living and recorded memory make no mention of someone who proclaimed and shattered the same edict. In that regard, you are an anomaly. The bad news is, the Archons know this and will be suspicious of this distinction. Along with this parchment, I have included the contact information of the Honourable Fatebinder Myothis an old peer of mine, and perhaps the most knowledgeable in the court on matters not taught to us by Tunan. Treat her with respect, and she will not betray your confidence. Best of luck, Calvina. I think there are things are about to get even stranger. Oh, for you. So this missive is uh, complete. So what is this myothis? There we go. Call in hand, you loom over a blank sheet of parchment. You have bound, uh, Binder Myothis's contact information in hand and contemplate your opening words. Simply a polite introduction should be sufficient. Dear Fatebinder Myothis, I write to you at the urging of my peer and tutor, Fatebinder Rogulus. He has found himself bereft of answers, a rare condition for him, and suggested you may be the only source of the answers I seek. If you will pardon the imposition, it would mean a great deal to learn what you know of Kairos's edicts, and the magic of the spies. The mountain spire of the tears has awoken to my presence, an event that occurred moments after I resolved an edict of Kairos. So it's critical that I learn just what has happened to me, and what it all means. I thank you in advance for your consideration and wisdom. Fatebinder Calvina. Yes, seems polite enough, doesn't it? Let's send. Excellent. Into the Maelstrom. Oh, hang on, these are some other ones. Seats of power. Claim the remaining spire, uh, spires of the tears. Two down, three to go. To Levian's Crossing. There you go. To confront Mouth Breather. Mouth Breather Nefcio before he escapes. Sounds time critical. Okay, so we'll get there as soon as we can. Okay. There's quite a few little updates there. So who are these two jokers? Consider it, not for a second. We pick our soldiers from elite northern families. We don't recruit from flies buzzing over a mass grave. Are oh, the disfavoured so narrow-minded? My gang's strength delivered us across half a dozen battles with a line of fallen enemies in our wake. Not many conscripts can say the same. The question is not a matter of your skill, but of your breeding, your training, your pedigree. Hail, Graven Ash. Fatebinder, if I might take a moment of your time. Yes, indeed. How can I assist? This person comes representing a Scarlet Chorus gang. What did you call yourselves again? The Grinning Bleeders. We have a long and storied reputation in the Scarlet Chorus ranks. Killers of the highest order. My gang. Before I was boss here, I ran with the Broken Shits, the Salty Nightmares, and Trap Gang. Everyone made a name for themselves during the war. Hm. You made up at least two of those gangs, and don't even bother denying it. Just be careful what names you toss around when there's a former boss standing within earshot. You little pissant. Uh, verse. So kind of you to chime in with your corrections. <laughs> in any case, he's asking to join the disfavoured, which is out of the question. 
I've explained the numerous reasons why we can't allow it, but the wretch won't listen. Hmm. And you want me to decide on the matter? You must know Kairos's laws back to front. Oh, she does. <laughs> and some loopholes as well. And I trust you know our traditions as well. If it peels this lamprey off my backside, I'll allow it. Speaking for my gang, we'll accept your judgement. When are you going to crack some tearsman's skulls with Kairos's army again, no matter what colour they wear? Okay. Well, uh, come on. I shall take your testimony. Well, again, we know, we kind of know why the, you know, the reading Northern Stock and all that kind of stuff. But uh, let's get the full, let's get the full facts here. Do it by the book and all that. Uh, asking uh, good old. Um, Lantry to start writing down the notes. So uh, just remind me, why can't the recruits join the disfavoured? Eh, most of us would rather swallow our tongues than take orders from some rigid officer who talks his way into leadership. But each to their own. Huh. Where do I start? Not only does Graven Ash handpick his disfavoured from the decorated northern stock, he takes a personal interest in our training and education. We are his sons and daughters. To accept anything less in our ranks would hold the very process in contempt. The only capacity they could serve would be manual labour, hauling wagons or digging latrines. But that's the work of slaves and not what they've come requesting. Hmm. And why the sudden interest in the disfavoured? Better training, better quarters, iron weapons. The disfavoured have everything we wanted out of joining the military. We want to serve Kairos to the best of our abilities. Is that asking too much? Old ironclad here seems to think so. Their respect for command leaves something to be desired. Yes, and... Uh, why did you leave the Scarlet Chorus? Our old gang boss fell at the last battle of Engines Well. We saw how the disfavoured operated and realised it was a chance for a better life. A longer one too. Desertion happens every day in the Scarlet Chorus. I can tell you that we won't be missed. Huh. He says that like he's boasting. Only the shit heel recruits would ever make a name for themselves are overlooked at muster. Well, this is quite a straightforward ruling. He's already defected once. What's to stop him from defecting again? It sounds like he's come here just for an easy time of it. Wants fancy weapons, fancy training. Doesn't work like that, I'm afraid to say. So, uh, yeah. No deal. Good. Whatever's fair, we're prepared to stand by it. <laughs> you abandoned your duties, execution. Technically speaking. Send them as uh, civilians. Hard labour. Yeah, hard labour sounds good. We don't want them to go forth. You know, Cascalacorus causing enough trouble as it is. I think execution's a little bit on the harsh side. But uh, there needs to be some, some, put them to good use. Some level of punishment. For for their for their defect you know for their sort of uh, defection, uh, yeah, and hard labour, hauling wagons, digging latrines. This work needs to be done. So uh, you want to join the disfavoured? <laughs> You've got your wish. I can sign you to hard labour. You shall haul wagons and you shall dig latrines. That is my judgment. But that's a waste of our talent. We could shed so much blood for the disfavoured. I agree it's a waste, but these fools should have known better than to turn coat. It always bites you in the ass eventually. Hm. Horde maggot, you occupy space and eat our food. Don't presume to complain about your treatment. Fatebinder, I thank you. We could all learn from your practical, calculating approach. Yes, practical calculating approach. We like that. Very true. 
eye. Ooh. There. See that. I do. Ooh. Aoja's calling. You staff, it looks like to me. Sigil of life. Regenerating. Sounds like it could be something for this chappy. Good old lamb tree. Yeah. Staff of atrophy. Nah. Get rid of that. Put that there like that. Much better. Yeah. It is a staff, isn't it? Yeah. Plus 10 to his control life and he also regenerates. Yeah, this is a definitely a staff for him. Okay, let's keep moving. Oh, there's another Skylar chorus. Kind of you to stop and chat? I'm in a sticky situation and nobody in my gang is alive or around to help me out. Stop wasting the fate binder's time. She has better things to do than listen to some criminal's mewling. Yes, what seems to be the problem here? Uh, thanks for hearing me out. The disfavoured aren't keen on conversation, otherwise I wouldn't be here. It's impossible to get a word in edgeways. Soldiers caught me outside a breach in the old walls. That's it. I wasn't inside, I hadn't stuck my toe through the threshold, and I wasn't dancing with any bay. I have a healthy relationship with self-preservation. Okay, so, so why uh, have you been arrested? You're only hearing one side of the story, Fatebinder. Our scouts observe this wretch, readying to enter the old walls. Her account is flawed. Her guilt witnessed by multiple trustworthy northerners. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's... Is readying to enter the best you have? Because I could just as easily argue that you are readying to get knife between your shoulder blades. But it doesn't count for shit until I see blood and bronze. I didn't go into the old walls. Case closed. Yes, I would suggest you cooperate before I adjudicate on this matter. If you ask me, this prisoner has already been tried and sentenced. But if this little game will silence her cotwalling, then be my guest. Hmm. I'll stand by your decision. Couldn't land me anywhere worse than this. Right. What were you doing outside of the old walls? My gang went inside. As I tried to tell the disfavoured clods a hundred times over, I shouted myself raw, trying to get them back out, but the gang was having none of it. Our leader discovered the breach and got himself excited over the chance of finding treasure. Try as I might, I couldn't talk him out of it. Hmm. Soldier, can you speak to this defence? I wasn't there, of course, but I'm familiar with the arrest record. There was no gang, just a lone opportunist out to make her fortune, breaking Kairos's laws. The scouts could tell just by looking at her that she was headed for the breach. She's a fiery one, put up quite a fight when they took her into custody. I have no reason to doubt the charges. Hmm. Did your gang cause the breach in the old walls? What? Are you kidding me? It would either take incredible force or incredible magic to bash through that ancient barrier. We had neither at our disposal. Either one of Kairos's edicts or some local mage caused the breach. Whatever ruling you make, don't pin that on me. I'm inclined to agree. Don't make the mistake of giving this one too much credit. So, any idea? What your gang was doing in the old walls? Causing trouble, looting, no more or less than what gangs do. Our boss was obsessed with holding his position, which is healthy when you're in the Scarlet Chorus, when he came to the conclusion that the old walls might have some powerful artifacts. He resolved himself to find one at all costs. Funny to see a guy so wrapped up in survival trying to get himself killed. Typical behaviour from someone who isn't confident in their leadership. Makes for a nice self-fulfilling prophecy when their own gang takes them down. 
see, she understands. And any idea where your gang is now? Hm. I never saw them make it out of the old walls, so either they did or they didn't. My money's on the latter. If they made it out, they aren't wasting their breath trying to find me, so fuck them. Hm. I like the attitude. If I had a mind to recruit, she would be my second or third. So just to clarify, you have no interest in entering the old walls? Never. I grew up in the tears. Even we know better than to go inside the old walls. If not because of Kairos's law, because the things lurking inside were like to eat us. Whatever you can find in the shadow of those ruins, it's not worth the risk. Okay. I'm ready to make my judgement, I think. I've heard enough. It sounds to me that it's uh, this testimony is honest and true. Her gang went in, but she did not. So we say we don't trust her testimony. Inconclusive evidence. Or... We take her uh, testimony, as it was given, and rule in her favour. I would suggest that it would be inconclusive, to be quite honest, because she was, at, she was stood outside, there was a hole in the breach, She's talked about her gang, but there's no evidence of this gang. So, we, yeah, I'd suggest that, although we are inclined to <clears throat> believe her story, I think uh, the facts of the case quite clearly suggest that there is uh, insufficient evidence to prove the charges. It's as simple as that. Probably not going to get the, the best of reputation, but it's, it's probably the most accurate uh, summary of the, of the circumstances. Insufficient evidence to prove the charges. Ooh, I am the law. Gained favour with two and favoured. I didn't see the rest of that, but anyway. Uh, shrewd, Fate Binder. Very shrewd. I think you'll do just fine. Legal technicalities are my favourite kind. Go rejoin the war effort with a new gang recruit. Start your own if you have a mind to. That's an order. Yes, ma'am. If you were gathering a force, I'd kill my way into your good graces. <laughs> Pity I have to settle for less. This goes against my orders and my reason, but I cannot argue the ruling of Tunan's agent. I'll let you go. Try and stay out of trouble. Hm. I'll stay out of the old walls. But that's all I can promise. So indeed. Legal technicality? Yes, indeed. Insufficient evidence. Right. Shall we move on? Any more? Judgments required here whilst I'm around? <laughs> Good grief. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Ooh, ingots. Take those, thank you very much. We'll call, it, call it payment for our, uh, for our judgments that we've just cast, you know? I don't want to go inside just yet. Just uh, finish around the perimeter first. Oh, hmm. nice. Okay, some gems. Right. There's got to be a uh, merchant here, surely. So Zephylus and Osmia. This could be a merchant. I think it's F6 to quick save on this game. Right. Aha. So 
So there's some limits <clears throat> to what we are being sold here. Calvino doesn't like to be limited. Is an agent of the court not deserving enough of the full provisions here? Uh, as uh, uh, Tuna's vassal, I'm sure that you are afforded certain luxuries that don't extend to us. The same goes for the disfavoured. Archon Ash recruited us from the Northern Empire, so we're subject to his favour. Such is his right. Uh, <laughs> I demand compensation. Okay. We won't be demanding compensation. Right then, what have we got here? This is, uh, ooh, Sigil of Stone. 45 bronze rings. Holy cow. But this has got to be purchased. So before we do, let's just see what we can sell to make uh, some c coin to pay for that uh, rather expensive uh, sigil that we don't have yet. There's 25 before we've even started, so that's pretty decent. Um, we could probably sell some of those. We already sold a lot of these in the last session. Get rid of the non-branded uh, stuff. Okay. 30 rings. We're only giving over 14 now, so that's not too bad. Camping supplies, we have enough. Um... That won't be. That will be pretty. Maybe pretty decent for uh, for for Barrick here. Two armor penetration, but less accuracy. Again, doesn't really seem worth thirty-two coins. This, on the other hand, seems a hell of a lot better. And can be thrown. Not that he would throw it, but what about a decent tower shield? Much better parry and endurance, just a bit more cumbersome. This is extra parry and extra dodge. Interesting. Okay, well, uh, we'll trade for the Sigil of Stone. Excellent. We really like that. Right, let's learn that, shall we? Straight away, no messing around. Sigil of Stone. Let's see what we can do with this. We can do Petrification Affliction. Nice. And what else? Jagged Spike of Hard Stone. Send it flying towards the foe. Pierce or Crush Damage. Whichever is the weakest. Or whichever is the greater, rather. Whichever defense of theirs is the weakest, I'm assuming. So, yes, this looks pretty nifty. Nice. We're going to have a little bit more of a play with our uh, spells before we're next in combat, because we've, of course, got more lore now. Um, given our training and our level up, and we've got a few new spells and expressions since the last time we've messed around with them. So, Okay. Thank you very much. Osmir. Welcome to Iron Hearth. Okay. Well, there must be a reason why she's named, but there's not really much we can ask. She did say the disfavoured are overworked, so perhaps she has something for us. Asking why the disfavoured are overworked. Okay, so, you know, war effort, civil war, facing overwhelming numbers. Once the war is over and the tears are properly subdued, my hope is that Kairos dispatches some relief troops to support the occupation. We all deserve a season of rest. Yes, we shall note... Your point. Very generous. Okay. Right then, I think that's uh, us sorted here. On the outskirts of uh, Iron Hearth. Now for us to enter the inner sanctum, if you will. 
and speak with the Archon himself, unless there's anything else that we need to discuss in here before we speak to him. Oh wow, look at this. Lots of people stood ready to attention. Okay then. We'll do. Speak with the big man, shall we? 